Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remix Podcast, so let's do this. Hey friends, well, happy November, and if you've been here for a little bit, you know what time it is. It's November. This month, for the last two years, I have really focused on helping you to empower you to let your yes be yes and your no be no. So today's episode is going to be all about helping you to do just that. And I know that as we move into the holiday season, which is super hard to even believe that we're here already again, it feels like just yesterday I was doing a November episode for you. But um, the fact is, this is the time where the holiday hustle comes in, right? And this is the time where we probably get asked to do more than we typically do. We get invited to more things and it can be a very stressful time. And I believe a lot of that stress comes from not being able to say no, but also not having a plan in place for what you want your holiday season to look like. And so I want to help you with that today. We're going to be just talking about how, you know, what are you going to be saying yes to in this season? What are you going to be saying no no in this season? And then I'm going to give you four powerful ways to say no, because I know this is a struggle for many of you and um, you're still trying to figure it out. And maybe some of you are like, girl, I don't have a problem saying no, then you know what? Come find me on Instagram and give me your best tip because this is a topic that comes up all the time in my community, in my coaching uh, with my clients. And so I'm always looking for you know, different ways that people are finding confidence in their no. And uh, so let's just dive right in and help you to, again, let your yes be yes and your no be, be no. And I really want you to think about why are you saying yes to some of the things that you're saying yes to? Is it because of fear, right? You're afraid you're going to be looked at as the mean girl. You're going to be looked at as someone who's selfish, or you've just kind of adopted the identity of being misdependable. And you kind of love that feeling of people needing you, but you're not realizing that you're saying yes to one thing means you're saying no to something else. And maybe that no to something else is something that's actually really important to you. But because of fear, or maybe it's obligation, you've always said yes to these things. You've always said yes to go into that party. You've always said yes to this budget for your holiday season. You fill in the blank there. Um, Maybe it's guilt. Maybe you've tried to say no before and you got hit with guilt from that person, right? Because, you know, when you start establishing boundaries, the only people who truly get upset with you are the people who benefited from you having none. And I want you to think about that for a second, because especially if you are a giver, you need to learn your limits because the takers don't have any, they'll just keep coming to you and they'll keep asking you. And we teach people how to treat us, right? If you've always said yes, and you've always been that misdependable, which are good things, if they're the right things that you want to say yes to, then of course, they're going to keep coming to you. So we have to retrain people right on how to treat us. But it starts with you first. It starts with you figuring out what is most important to you right now in the season. What are your yeses right now? And what are your no's? And if you've been someone who has habitually said yes, and even when you know it needs to be a no, and you say yes initially because you're afraid of that fear, you're afraid of that response from that other person, but then you have to go back to them anyway and say no. Like that's two conversations that you're setting yourself up for because you said yes in the moment when really it was a no. And now you got to go back 
and and cancel, right? That commitment. And that doesn't feel good either. And it's totally okay if you need to cancel commitments. It's totally okay if something changes in your life and that yes, now needs to be a no. I'm not saying that, but it doesn't feel good when, when you know internally, this is supposed to be a no, but you're afraid to say it. And so you say yes. And then you have to go back and have that conversation. I know someone listening is probably in that situation right now. It just doesn't feel good. And it makes it even harder. So how do you want to show up as a mom, a wife, an entrepreneur, a friend this holiday season? I want to help you have a successful versus stressful, right? Because the truth is, it's still going to be a little bit stressful just because there's a lot more things going on in the holidays, but it can be good stresses. It can be exciting hustle and bustle and things, all the, all the energy that comes into the holiday season. If you're putting your energy into the right things, if you're saying yes to the things that bring the energy right to you. So I want you to take some time and really get with yourself, get with your spouse, maybe get with your kids um, if they're old enough. And I want you to really go through these questions to help you to prepare. I think it was John Maxwell who said, if we prepare, if we prepare, we don't have to repair. If you prepare well for this holiday season, then you don't have to repair maybe physical Um, exhaustion that you put yourself through, maybe mental exhaustion, maybe being around the people that you really didn't want to be around, like you're in repair mode because you didn't prepare well for the season. And seasons are different, right? The way we do our holidays is not always the same. And I'm a big girl of tradition. I love tradition movies. I love traditions around all of the holidays, but, you know, as my kids get older, like I'm going to have to be flexible with some of those traditions because as they start building their own families, which is way down the road, but you know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're teenagers now and they're, they're excited about some of the traditions for sure. But I know that there's going to come a time where I'm going to have to be more flexible and and it's, and it's going to be hard. That doesn't mean it's impossible. You can create the experience you're looking for, and you can have different seasons of your holidays that look one way and then down the road look a little different. And I just, I know that so many of us fall into that trap. Well, it's just what I've always done. So it's just how it's always going to be. And I'm here to say it doesn't have to be that way unless you want it to be that way. So have the courage, have the clarity, and have the confidence to create the holidays that you want. And they're going to bring you the most joy, the most fulfillment possible for you and for your family. So if you plan it out now, decide now what you want it to look like the chances of it actually being that way are greater. Instead of looking back January 1st or January 2nd and be like, man, I wish, I wish, right? I wish I would have spent less time with that person. I wish I would have spent more time with that person. I wish I wouldn't have spent that much money on shopping. I wish I would have, you know, you fill in the blank there. We don't want to start the new year with regrets, right? That's not a good mindset to start your year out, your year out with. So you will make better decisions about how you spend your time, your money, your resources, your energy. We have to become really great at managing our energy, our mindset, and our beliefs. And that comes from preparing and for planning. You've heard the quote, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? We can't just wing it. And I know there's so many out there that are like, I'm not planners. I just wing it. And I just want to ask, how's that working for you? Is it working for you? If it is, great. But if it's not, and you really don't want to repeat from last year, if you really want to enjoy your holidays, remember your holidays, um, to be joyful moments, to create those experiences, then you probably need to have a little bit of preparation. And the work that I do with my one-on-one clients utilizing the ProScan, we can actually see if this is a strength of your personality or not. Some people, it's not a strength of their personality. They do prefer to wing it and have you know, flexibility and change and, and and you're totally okay with that. That's your natural gift. But we know to achieve certain goals in life, we have to dial up, right? You have to increase your, it's called conformity on the pro scans. So you have to increase your structure and your systems to get the desired result that you want. Now, again, for some of you, that just is natural. For me, I love planning. I shouldn't say I love planning. I love having a plan. I love having the details. I love seeing what's coming. I don't like to necessarily wing it all the time. And so that's a strength of mine, but it doesn't have to be complicated. So I really just wanted to give you these five questions for you to think through and really visualize and decide now so that when those 
opportunities come, you know, you can say yes and you can say no, and you can make your yes be yes and be excited about it and instead of dreading the things that you're saying yes to and let your no be no. So number one, like, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Do you want to feel joy and excitement and contentment and tradition? Like, what do you want to to feel going into this holiday season and while you're in, in the season? Do you want to feel stress? I like, I know some people who love the whole Black Friday uh, shopping experience because they love just the excitement, the anticipation around those things. And they love the whole feel of that fast paced moving. This is a question for you to answer. It's not for me to decide for you. It's just a really valid question to ask yourself. How do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? And the second question is, what parties will you attend? I don't know about you, but I, I'm born and raised here in my hometown. I'm still here and I know a lot of people and, and we get invited to a lot of parties over the years. And, you know, we've had to turn some of those down because both of our families also live here and we have cousins and we just have a lot of family things that happen and they begin Thanksgiving, you know, and all through January. So it's just a really busy time for for us. And we do have a lot of things that we get invited to, a lot of things that people want us to commit to. And we just had to sit down a long time ago and decide, okay, what is going to be our yes? What parties do we want to attend? And which ones do we want, do we not want to? And it may change every year. This year, we might say yes to the ones that we said no to. Uh, so just know that number one, if you do say no, doesn't mean you're like off the list, right? That they're never going to invite you again. Sometimes maybe, but I would say if they really wanted you to be there, they're going to keep inviting you, right? So don't let that hold you back from from saying a really confident no. Uh, just just be thinking about it. You know, um, another big thing for me was the the cards. You know, the the Christmas cards. Some people now have done Thanksgiving cards. Some people have done you know Happy New Year cards. Just because it was just so much pressure to get the family photo and then you know upload it and then order it and then get it in and then write the and I absolutely love receiving them from people. But I had to decide that that was not going to be something that I wanted my energy to go into because it just wasn't that important to me. And I was probably very unpopular in in that, but something had to give. If I wanted to create the memories with my kids, like baking cookies and some of the other traditions that we had, there were some, something had to give. So you can, you know, parties, Christmas cards, you fill in the blank there. Like what what are the things that you want to engage in? And what are the things that you just need to let go for this season? And I, again, I want you to understand that just means for right now, you know, my kids are getting older now. I have a little bit more time. I probably, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm going to commit to doing Christmas cards or Thanksgiving cards or, or uh, new year's cards. Cause honestly we have social media now, right? So we can just take a picture, upload it. And things are a lot more simple these days, but you know, no for now is that is all that is. It's just a no for now. It doesn't mean that you're never going to do these things again. It just means for right now, something's got to give. And what happens when when you you don't do this, right? And you try to do all the things and you put your superwoman cape on and you're going to be that mom who does it all. You become the worn out mom, right? You become the mom who looks back on her season and says, that was fast. I don't remember much of it. And I just remember it was very stressful. I mean, who wants to do that, right? Who wants to experience that again? And so the next year, you kind of already have this, this stress response that comes up for you. Probably some of you are feeling it right now as it's, you know, November, the beginning of November. And you're thinking about the family members that you may disappoint because there are things you want to say no to. You're thinking about all the things that are on your list that you want to do or that you think you want to do or that's expected of you. And you're already feeling stressed out right now. Let's try to get ahead of that. Let's build some confidence by answering these questions for yourself. The third question is, how much will you work? How much will you work? Um, As a mompreneur, you have the flexibility for the most part to decide when you're going to work and when you're not going to work. As a mompreneur for 17 years, here's what I've seen happen is that you just close up shop because you do have the flexibility to do so. You can put the you know the close sign on your door on your online business, but I don't recommend this because then you have to reopen and then you have to get back into the groove of things. And so my recommendation is still do some work, but what is that going to look like? 
your kids are probably going to be home from school. So they're going to be around the house more. There are going to be lots of other things that are going to be taking your priority and, and, and rightfully so. But that doesn't mean it's an all or nothing mentality here. It doesn't mean that you just going to put your whole business on the back burner because the facts are customers are buying. You have clients who have needs. You have clients who want to purchase things. I'm not sure what all your services are, but there's something that they still want to engage with you, right? And it's really hard to restart when you stop. It's really hard in your mindset. It's really hard in your energy to make that shift. So take the break that you need. Definitely spend time with your family and do those holiday traditions. But can you you know, do a power hour, even if it was just an hour a day that you gave your business to keep the doors open, to still be engaging with your clients, still engaging with your, your customers, do that. It's going to be way better, but you get to decide how much you're going to work. Decide that now. So you don't have mom guilt that you're working when you are supposed to be baking cookies or, you know, when you're baking cookies, you're feeling guilty that you're not, you're not working on your business. Decide now, what are the hours that you want to work? What are you going to commit to? What feels good for you? And then have personal integrity and do what you say you're going to do. Do what you say you're going to do. Do it for yourself. Do it for your kids. Do it for your husband. Uh, do it for you know your clients. Do what you say you're going to do. Let your yes be yes and your no be no when it comes to your work. Hey friend. So you have been trying to make some shifts this year. Maybe you set some resolutions and you're just feeling stuck. You don't feel like you're making progress or you're just not sure what to do. And you've heard me say this before, but being stuck is a mindset, not a position. And this is where a coach comes in to support you. Because here's what I know to be true about you, friend. If you could have done it alone, you would have already done it, period. And as a life coach and a certified PDP professional, I specialize in using a research-based personality and performance survey called the ProScan to illuminate how your unique personality and natural strengths, your work and life environments are influencing real-time performance. So here's what you need to do. Go to the link in the show notes and book your free clarity call to learn more about how I can support you in your goals. I can't wait to illuminate your strengths, cultivate your confidence and elevate your life. Number four, how will you plan for your uh, health goals, your nutrition and fitness goals? Like, how many workouts you're going to get? Like we know this is the time where we overindulge in our food because everything around the holidays, at least in my family is around food. And so how do you want to get ahead of that? How do you want to prepare for that? How do you want to make sure that now the kids are probably going to be home from school? You still have your workouts. You still have you time, a way to, you know, bring energy into your body is by movement. Movement is medicine. So how are you going to continue on with that workout? It may not be like it's always been when, when you're not on your holiday break and your kids are not on holiday break, but don't have the all or nothing mentality where you're like, nope, I'm just going to skip out on all of it. I'm going to eat all the cake, do none of the workouts, and I'm going to start back on January 1. That is not going to work well for you. It is going to be really, really difficult to jumpstart that back in January. So have some moderation, enjoy the food. I mean, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays because there's no, you know, wrapping the gifts and trying to get everything ready for, for Christmas morning. It's just about people and connecting and, and gratitude and being thankful and eating and eating and eating all the foods that I love. And I eat guilt-free on that day. And, um, but I've learned to moderate it too. So I don't feel so they had um, that afternoon or um, the, ne the next day. So decide now and plan for your nutrition, plan for your fitness, plan for all of that so that you're not just throwing in the towel and like, I'm going to get back to it on January 1. And the fifth one is, what will your shopping look like? What will your budget be? This is really important. So again, that you don't have buyer's remorse so that you stay within your budget and you are preparing for that now. You know, who, who are you going to buy for? Maybe the people that you used to buy for, they're no longer on your list, need to be on your list. Um, decide these things now so that you don't wake up on December 26th and you have this bills, right? The credit card bill comes in and now you're in debt and that doesn't feel good. And that might be directly tied to how much you want to work your business, right? I know a lot of people who ramp up their holiday business because it helps to fund their Christmas 
shopping, right? It helps to fund the Christmas traditions that they have. So these are all things you need to be thinking about now and getting in place now so that there's no rush at the end or there's no resentment at the end of how you spent your money, um, how your husband spent his money, who the, who you bought for, what the expectations are. Have those discussions now. Again, don't let this be another holiday where you, know, you say on January 1, I wish I did more of this. I wish I did less of this. I wish I didn't spend time with those people. You know, they sucked the energy out of me and they're always so negative. They always have that conversation that we don't want to talk about, right? You get to decide. You're an adult. You get to decide who you want to spend your time with, who you want to surround yourself with. And and maybe you don't have a complete say in that because it's family and sometimes family uh, family situations can be kind of icky. How do you want to show up? And how do you want to be remembered? That's the only thing you can control in that situation is you and how you want to show up and how you want to respond and how what, what conversations you're going to engage in. So do some visualization. Think about it. How do you want to show up? Be prepared. There's always the one, right, who asks you something or wants to talk about something and it's controversial and you're just not interested. How are you going to handle that situation instead of being in the moment and reacting by preparing you don't have to repair the damage from that comment that you said, right? Or the reaction that you had. You can actually respond respectfully when you prepare for these situations. So remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And a successful holiday will not happen on accident. Success is not an accident. It comes from preparation and doing the work ahead of time so you can show up. It just feels so confident. You know, that you've already had these conversations, you've already had these decisions, and you know what you want your holidays to look like, and you know what you want your conversations to look like, and you know how you want to show up, and how do you want to be remembered? You know that. You have to work on that now. And I'm going to prov- provide for you a free resource in the show notes for you to kind of help you with these questions. So if you're like doing laundry right now, you didn't write them down, I'm going to provide a free resource for you to utilize this. But here's the thing it's not going to help you if you don't do it, do the work right? It's not going to help you to have a less stressful holiday if you don't actually sit down with it and do this work and have these conversations. Okay. So the last part that I want to share with you are four powerful ways to say no without being a mean girl. I have this conversation all the time um, with clients, with friends, with peers. It's just, I was actually just on a podcast today and you know, she, she, we were just discussing just how hard it is for us to say no. And I think it does come back to your priorities and and again, preparing for what matters most for you. We don't find time for what matters most. We make time. And so by preparing well for the holidays, then you can know this is important to me for this holiday season. These are the things that I that are non-negotiable. These are the traditions that are non-negotiable. These are the places that we're going to go that are non-negotiable. This is, you know, how much work I'm going to do. You get to decide all of that. And when you decide that, you know clearly, confidently, and you can courageously stand in the power of knowing what your priorities are so that when you say no, it no longer feels like you're being a mean girl. It's just you honoring your priorities. I will say this over and over and over and over and over again until my dying day that saying no does not make you a mean girl. How you say it might, how you say it Um, And the emotion you bring to the conversation might make it not respectfully saying no, but you can absolutely say no. And one of the things we talked about in the podcast today was pausing because out of habit, you're probably used to saying yes. Like immediately when someone asks you something, if you're the yes girl, you're just used to saying yes, especially if you find your identity and your worth in being that girl that says yes to everything, Miss Dependable, wearing busy as a badge of honor. If that's you right now, then it probably feels good to say say yes. But at to what extent and to what expense are you saying yes to these things? And so I want you to think about, you may not be able to, one of the things I talk about with my clients with when we're doing working on their mindset and, and trying to replace some negative thoughts is sometimes you can't think the positive thought that you want to think because of the disbelief of the thought. So I could tell you, think this, but if you don't truly believe that thought to be true, then it's not going to work for you. You can't just say, well, this is what Martine says is I should think. So I'm just going to think this. And so a lot of times what we have to do is get you from a negative belief or a negative thought into a neutral thought first. 
And then that's like a bridge in the gap and then get you to a positive thought, right? So right now, maybe you, your thought is, I cannot say no. I just can't. So the bridge to that is, but can you just say, I need to get back to you on that? Could you say that with confidence? Because we have been conditioned to want immediate responses from people, right? We want immediate gratification and then people expect that of us. And so we know this, we've been conditioned to this. And so we feel like I have to give them an answer right now when really you don't, you really don't. You can take 24 hours or to, by the end of the day, just something to stop the pattern of you just saying yes to everything. So maybe that's your first thing is you're not ready to say no yet necessarily, but could you just say, I need some time to think about that. I'll get back to you within 24 hours. How does that feel? For some of you, that is going to be your first step because you're just not ready to say no. You struggle with it and that's okay. I used to as well. And that power of the pause for me was was critical because it did give me time to really go back and look, okay, these are the things that are important to me right now. Is this helping me get there? Is this in alignment with the goals that I have? If it's not in alignment with the goals that I have for my holiday season or my business, then it just has to be a no for now. But if you're used to saying yes, that's not going to be super easy in the beginning. So maybe that's your first step. But I wanted to give you four powerful ways to say it. Cause I don't know if you're like me, like I, give me the words to say a lot of times, I, you know, when I was um, being coached, she would give me, you know, scripts to follow for different, like, just give me the words to say, I will say them. I will memorize them. And then, I, you know, you kind of figure out your personality, but for the most part, I love, just give me an example of the words to say that really helps me to form my words. So I wanted to give these to you. So the first one could be, you know, thank you for thinking of me, but it's just, it's not going to work for me right now. You don't have to say, because thank you for thinking of me, but it's not going to work for me right now. That's a very respectful way of saying no. Thank you for thinking of me, but it's not going to work for me right now. Don't add the because. You do not have to explain yourself. And here's the thing. When you give them more words, especially the takers, right? And the people that are used to you saying yes, that just gives them more ammunition to come back. So the less you say, the less emotion you bring, the better. The second is I'm committed to not adding anything else to my plate at this time. Again, you could say, thank you for thinking of me, but I'm just committed to not adding anything else to my plate at this time. Who would say, who would, who would, now I shouldn't say who, because there will be people that will push back on that. But is that, is that a way that you could say no? Number three would be, you know, I know this is a great opportunity and I appreciate you thinking of me, but now it's just not the best time. Again, I know this is a great opportunity and I appreciate you thinking of me, but now is just not the, the best time. That to me feels very respectful. You're honoring that it's just not the best time for you. Thank you for thinking of me. Number four, I have to say no for now, but I will let you know if anything changes. Period. Don't have to explain it. You don't have to explain why you have to say no. You don't have to explain that this is not a great, this is not the best time. You don't have to explain that it's not going to work for you, right? You do not have to explain that. You can just simply say no. And that's a bonus one. Like no is a complete sentence. Even if you can't think of exactly what to say, you can just say it's a no for now, but thank you. Keep it simple and keep it confident because people will feed off your energy. If they sniff out any lack of confidence in your no, then they're going to kind of get in there and try to figure out, well, how can I get her to say yes? She doesn't really sound like she's confident in her no. So maybe she really does want to do this. Let me help her. <laughs> Let me push her into that. Yes. Right. We've all, we've all seen this before. So you do not have to explain yourself when it comes to your nose. You may have to have a conversation with yourself first and figure this out in your head first, but you do not have to justify why it's a no for you. And the reason why you're able to do that is because you've done the pre-work. You've figured out what's important for you right now. You figured out what your goals are and what are like, because there's a lot of great things you can say yes to. The things I'm, I'm talking about with the holidays, a lot of them are not bad things. They're just not the right things in this season. They're not the right yes right now. And just you just have to know if you're saying yes to one thing, you're going to have to say no to something else. And a lot of times we don't realize that until it's already, already over and done. And then we look back and go, man, I wish I'd have said yes to that and no to that. So this is the work that we needed to be doing. All right. 
Well, there was something else that I wanted to say, but I can't remember what it is right now. So maybe it's for another episode, but I hope this really, really will empower you to have the confidence, the clarity, and the courage to have the holiday season that you want, that your family wants, that's going to bring you joy, bring you contentment, bring you fulfillment, all the things that deep down, you know, you want. And if you just have to pause before you respond to someone, when they're making a request of you, that's okay. I know we live in a instant gratification culture right now, but it's okay to just say, you know what? I need to get back to you on that. And here's, here's the truth. You're not responsible for someone's response to your no or to your yes. That's up to them. Some are going to respond positively and some are not. Some are going to keep pushing and they're going to keep trying. They're going to keep asking, right? You're not responsible for that. You're only responsible for how you show up to that conversation, the response that you give and the actions you take afterwards. That's it. So love to hear what you think of this episode. I'm going to put in the show notes for you kind of a holiday priority list so that it kind of help you check yourself before you wreck yourself um, this holiday, get some clarity around what's important to you. Um, I'll also put these um, four powerful ways to say no, and maybe some other things in there for you just as a bonus. But um, I really desire for all of you to have the clarity and the, and the confidence and the courage to live out your life the way that you know God has intended you to do in the way God would want you to, in the way that God designed your family life to be in your traditions and what's most important to you. So, but it's not going to happen on accident. And now is the time to do this work. So we have some amazing turquoise talk guests this month um, that some will specifically be talking about no November. And, um, but they, we all have a common thing. We all have a common mission and passion to help you as mompreneurs to live out and build out the life in the business that you desire and that brings you joy and contentment. So I'm excited for our guests this month. I will be here on Instagram, on the podcast, and I'm also on LinkedIn. And listen, if you've been thinking about a clarity call and you have either had some fear around it, or you're not sure what's going to happen, or you're just afraid to take that first step because it is, it is hard to, to reach out and, and ask for help or to think that you're unfixable. I'm using that in quotes, or you're thinking that you're a unique case. Here's what I want to say. I've seen lots of things I've seen and helped women with lots of different um, struggles. And maybe you're like, I don't even know what I don't know. I don't know, you know what I need help with. I just know I need something different than what I'm experiencing right now. We're going to work through that on a clarity call. That's what it's for is to help you gain clarity around the three things that are creating those stuck moments for you, the beliefs and the mindsets that are keeping you there. And then we're going to work through what are the steps that you need to take next? What is that going to look like for you? So highly encourage you to get on a clarity call with me. Again, it's completely free. If you know someone that you're like, man, she would really benefit from getting on a phone call with Martine. You can send her my way. You can just shoot me a DM on Instagram. And um, we'll, we'll set it up then. We don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. I want you to make it as easy as possible for you to say yes to you and yes to your next steps. And that's what I'm committed to. All right, friends. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I am believing in you always, and I can't wait to catch you on the next one. Well, that's a wrap, friends, for this week's episode of the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me. And listen, friend, sharing is caring. So if you loved this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link, share this episode, or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Always.